Hello, I'm Rich Linton. I'm the Dean of the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences at North Carolina State University. And today I'm here to talk about a very exciting initiative for North Carolina called the Plant Sciences Initiative. Consider the following. By the year 2050, we will need to feed 9.3 billion people. So we must double our food supply and enhance technology by 70 to 100 percent. We need to do it with less land, less water, more challenging pests and disease, and still at the same time protect our environment. Two and a half years ago, as Dean of the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, I reached out to external and internal stakeholders, and the college developed the strategic plan for the future, which we called our Envision Future, with the number one question being asked, how do we grow our number one economic engine in North Carolina, which is agriculture? We've started acting already on ideas that were presented by both our external and internal stakeholders, and five programs and projects that we're working on include leadership programs, leadership that extends from 4-H and FFA to undergraduate students, to graduate students, to faculty, to staff, and to our external stakeholders. We have student access programs that are helping to be able to bring in students for the four-year traditional degree in agriculture and life sciences. We have an initiative for the food animal industry. We have an initiative for the food processing and manufacturing industry. And today, I'd like to focus on talking about the exciting plant sciences initiative. Last year, the North Carolina legislature asked for two different economic feasibility studies, one for plant sciences and the other for food processing and manufacturing. And in the last seven or eight months, North Carolina State University has been partnering with the North Carolina Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services to be able to do this economic feasibility study with a working group of consultants. Well, the results are finally in, and these reports were distributed and sent to legislators and stakeholders throughout the state of North Carolina. And you can see with this slide that the Plant Sciences Initiative has been led by Steve Lommel in the North Carolina Agriculture Research Office, and the Food Processing and Manufacturing Initiative has been led by Chris Dalbert, the Department Head of Food Bioprocessing and Nutrition Sciences. The full report and, a, and an abbreviated one-page document that describe both of these initiatives can be found at the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences main website, which is cals.ncsu.edu. Today we focus on the Plant Sciences Initiative and what the Economic Feasibility Study has shown and recommended in a way in which we can move forward. I think it's very important for us to recognize and understand that this initiative was stakeholder driven. We interacted with over 3,000 people in the strategic planning process two and a half years ago and it's also partnership driven. This is a partnership between the North Carolina Department of Agriculture and NC State North Carolina Farm Bureau and many, many stakeholders throughout the state of North Carolina. It's about an aspiration of innovative research, research that studies the challenges of the future, water use and water management, new varieties, plant production practices, food security, food safety, food nutrition, bioenergy. These are the kinds of things that we'd like to study in a very innovative way by bringing our disciplines together by doing interdisciplinary research. It's also a commitment to our students. We want to make our students in the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences the very best possible. So we provide them with a sound foundation on science, but we also expose them to an interdisciplinary network of scientists to study these complex problems. We also want them to interact with industry so that they'll be good problem solvers and leaders right out of the gate. And lastly, we also have a commitment to rural North Carolina and to our farming community that makes North Carolina what it is from an economic standpoint. The farming community has created our economic engine that's number one in the state and we'd like to continue to grow it from an ag profitability standpoint. So why here? Why North Carolina? Why North Carolina State? And why now? I think one of the important reasons is we've got a great amount of assets around the state relative to geography and climate. We can study almost any climate type and almost any soil type for plants that exist anywhere in the nation and many parts of the world. We think we can create many new jobs, and in just a few minutes I'll show you some of the numbers 
relative to job creation by this new initiative. We can train our leaders of tomorrow not with just undergraduate and graduate students, but our stakeholders around the state from rural North Carolina to our farming community to research Triangle Park. Our main goal is to be able to increase ag profitability. And plants are going to be critical for agriculture. Plants are involved in feeding humans, in feeding animals, in bioenergy, and also beautification and landscape and architecture design. We think we can grow this ag industry to $100 billion by 2020, which has been Commissioner Troxler's goal the last several years. We feel like we can increase the quality of life in both rural North Carolina and urban North Carolina with this initiative. And at the end of the day, we want to be the world leader in plant sciences, the Silicon Valley of California, but for plants in the state of North Carolina. That's how exciting this initiative is for North Carolina. So here's a little bit about what the report has suggested and recommended for bringing this plant sciences initiative forward. One of the things that the report identified and highlighted is the great asset that we have just in the state of North Carolina. This obviously, this slide shows the geographic diversity uh, among the many different crops that are produced in North Carolina. We're the third most diverse state when it comes to diversification of crop and plant products here in North Carolina. We have the mountains to the west, we have the beach to the, to the east, and the Piedmont in between. And we have research stations in partnership with the North Carolina Department of Agriculture in 18 different strategic locations, which allows us to study the many different soil types and climate types that can mimic Pennsylvania, Maine, Iowa, Indiana, Texas, Northern Georgia. With this initiative, our goal is to be able to take advantage of these assets and to bring new ideas to light and do the research that's needed in a very interdisciplinary way with our partners in industry and government. At the end of the day, it's about building the ag economy and creating new opportunities for jobs. This slide shows the direct impact of the Plant Sciences Initiative and the indirect impacts of the Plant Sciences Initiative. And as you can see here, within a 10-year period, uh, there'll be 2,400 direct jobs and 32,000 indirect jobs enhancing our economy by up to $10 billion. In order to be able to make this Plant Sciences in Initiative work, there's three basic components that we're trying to create. The first is building interdisciplinary teams to solve complex challenges around plants. It's bringing engineers and economists and plant scientists and soil scientists and microbiologists and food scientists together to be able to leverage ideas and leverage resources and work together to solve these complex issues that involve a very strong interdisciplinary team. It's about building business and academic partnerships. We envision partnering with companies from Research Triangle Park, from farming communities, from other universities. And we think that these partnerships will help us grow to be world-class and number one in the world when it comes to plant science research and innovation. And lastly, it's about the creation of a world-class facility to bring these ideas to life that will allow us to be able to bring together these interdisciplinary teams in a much more efficient way and also to be able to help foster these partnerships with industry and partnerships with government. So at the end of the day, the Plant Sciences Initiative in North Carolina will develop new and innovative technologies that will help us feed the world. It'll create high value in new crop varieties. It'll develop ultimately into new food products that can be used for human consumption and also new feed products that can be used for animal feed. It's about increasing our industry capital and taking advantage of an equation that no one else has in the country. Different soils, different climates, diversification of farming operations, Research Triangle Park, and a very strong land-grant university. No one else has these assets in their backyard that we're trying to take advantage of. It's about job growth, and it's about producing the most important thing for the future is a trained workforce that's ready to lead. We're interested in creating what we call the knowledge pipeline, which is taking discovery from basic research and applying this for use so that it can be ultimately implemented by stakeholders in North Carolina, our nation, and our world. The utilization and bringing together of the 18 different research stations in North Carolina will be critically important 
for leading this innovative research. And then when we translate this information to our stakeholders, cooperative extension will be a critical and core component. So the report identifies in moving forward four different interdisciplinary ways in which we can grow plant sciences. Crop protection, plant adaptation, precision agriculture, and agrosymbiotics are the four areas that, that have been recommended. North Carolina State is already in the process of developing internal and external committees and groups to be able to help us to be able to foster and move in that direction. Read the report so that you understand in more detail these four areas that have been recommended for research innovation. We're also very interested in taking advantage of other assets that we have in North Carolina. We envision that the Plant Sciences Initiative will work hand in hand with the Food Processing and Manufacturing Initiative as well as the Plants for Human Health Institute that's held in Kannapolis, North Carolina. Here's the grand vision that helps bring together the interdisciplinary network of scientists and the bringing together of businesses, industry, and government. This is the newly envisioned plant sciences complex on the Centennial Campus at North Carolina State University. This is a world-class facility that will be unlike any other in the world. It will be the best facility to stimulate the best research possible in order to be able to drive our economy forward. It'll have high-tech laboratories. It'll have meeting spaces that facilitate and encourage interdisciplinary networking. It'll have high-tech and the most advanced greenhouse space. And it'll also have an area that's spe specifically designed for industry to come into the building and be a partner with us. Now, if you're a student, look at the advantages that the student might gain. A student is now exposed to a very interdisciplinary network of research and they're working hand in hand with industry. A great benefit for our students going through this program. And one of the most interesting things that I've found as the dean of this college is the amazing amount of passion and support that has been driven by this initiative. Already we have many different members of the industry representing the small grain industry, the soybean industry, the Agriculture Foundation, corn growers, the Sweet Potato Commission, the peanut growers, the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences Research Foundation, and a challenge pledge where we've already raised almost $8 million to start the process of going after planning money for the creation of this plant science complex. We ask you today to join in our excitement and to join in our interest and help support this initiative. Let me give you one example of the kinds of things that we're trying to do in this plant sciences initiative. Sweet potatoes, I think, as we all know, we're number one in the country when it comes to the production of sweet potatoes. It was about creating new varieties. It was about creating new and improved crops to take us forward to be number one. And this is a very short history by where we created new varieties, enhanced the production practices, enhanced the storage practices, created new products. We now have sweet potato french fries. We now have aseptically produced sweet potato puree that's used for ingredients for products like baby foods. And we've now taken a product that was just for North Carolina and have expanded it to a new Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation grant of over $15 million to be able to help develop new varieties in Africa. We'd like to do what we did for sweet potatoes for many other plant products in the future. I hope that you'll join me in understanding that this is a very low risk, but a very, very high reward for the state of North Carolina. For more information and questions, I invite you to go to the website and or to contact Steve Lommel, who is leading this initiative. At North Carolina State University, we are very excited about the Plant Sciences Initiative, as well as many stakeholders throughout the state. We hope that you join us in our excitement. Thank you and go pack.